Dire team ban. Hello everyone, yeah, welcome it, it, back to Boreal Esports versus now Navi US. They have changed teams completely as we get into game number two. Nope, it's still the way to stack, but it is Boreal up one game. Coddle Guy again, going to be joined by the Root Gaming squad of, here we go again, Fluff Moo and Hotat Roots. I'm kidding, buddy. How you guys doing? Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I booted them off the stream because I thought there was too many opinions. Like, we were just cutting oh. each other off constantly. Start Like, I have so much stuff that I want to say, but it was like... You made the It was call. really difficult to get my points across. Oh. Yeah, whatever. I just booted them off. It's fine. They're my team. They have to listen to me. All right. If you want to kick right. me off, too, just feel free. You know, you, you can absolutely take control and take reign. I wouldn't mind it, but no. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Happy to have you here, Fluff. I love your insight. We don't get uh, no, a lot of uh, opinions, especially from the perspective of a heavy support player, which I do enjoy because usually, you know, it's a lot of people who love their cores and mid positions, and they can theory craft and dissect the hell out of that. But it's nice to know from perspective of a support, like, what, what we should be seeing and what Ten kind of movement is to be expected. And it was nice. So here we're going to go into game number two. Now, game number one, you Five felt that it was remaining. pretty much an outdraft. Uh, pretty much Boreal got what they wanted and they executed it properly. Uh. And for the way to stack, they put together a game Dia plan, team but team it ban. didn't really seem to match up. They had a, a fun little cheeky start. You know, Jubei was one <laughs> step ahead for the offlane play, but it just seemed to kind of fall apart here. So when you're trying to get your head, Square coming into game number two. I mean, how do you expect way too stacked to kind of to, to come out here so they can secure themselves a strong win? I think they'll just pick themselves a more balanced lineup. Like already, the Shadow Fiend is like one of the best balanced heroes in the game, or one of the most balanced heroes in the game, and like probably one of the better like mids in the meta right now. I feel like Ten it's just super powerful. Remaining. It's not like it's not cheesy. It's not um, something that's really Five uncommon. It's something remaining. that they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And they've changed their name to Navi US, so their tactics, I mean, their tactics have changed. And then like, <laughs> well, again, this it was kind of weird because like, their draft just like completely changed. I mean, th this wasn't really even close to their opening last game. They w they did with the they did dazzle, and the PL, which I thought was a fine opening, but they kind of just like dropped it. So maybe they're just gonna change their remaining. play style completely. I guess like that's what um, like if I was Five in the drafting chair, I might have made that decision or like thought. In that way, but anyway, so uh, Boreal time. opens with Earthshaker Clock. It looks like um, Boreal overall they they like the Earthshaker as a sport. Dire it seems that way to me because like a lot of teams will offline the Earthshaker and like put it exclusively on their role. But it looks like Boreal is like really really likes the hero, and I agree with that too. I I really love the hero Earthshaker. Earthshaker. And then like with the Clock pick, they're kind of covering their own bases. Like Clock's one of the most like it's like the mortal enemy of Earthshaker. You can't cast any spells once you get hooked and cogged and it's really annoying you can't really do much to him as a support either Ten so that's seconds remaining. really nice for them uh and there you go with the, uh, boreal banned out the draw because seconds remaining they understand the draw sf combo they they like that shot themselves and mm -hmm. they think that maybe Reserve navi us time. is gonna follow that train of thought and then like they have the rubik support too and rubik um, benefiting Winter from the draw or as, like not normally a, a very good zoning support navi actually gets so much potential off of that but then uh, <laughs> Boreal gets a wyvern and I feel like this hero is just like too good not to pass up like yeah especially if you're just gonna pick a rubik over it I don't know sorry I'm gonna let you talk go ahead <laughs> no dude it, it's a rare opportunity that we get to, to have you here so please don't feel like you, you need to kind of have to hand it off to me I appreciate all the extra all insight right. and I, I certainly agree I'm just gonna go ham yeah just go ham man just go crazy I mean if you want to do the play by play as well get in on it I would Ten not sir, I would not mind at all but I, I I do like one or something. I'm I'm behind Five you 100. percent Wyvern pretty damn ridiculous to find him already make his way to this to near the back Reserve end of this time. second picking Spirit phase is just a, a bit right, crazy right, to me. On. But every because every second that goes pick. by, there's like there, there's like a list of things that I want to talk about, and every second that goes by is like I'm wasting the opportunity to say something about. So okay, so the the Rubik pick they picked it because it's really good versus Earthshaker. You can steal the Fissure, but it's also like really good versus Clocker as well because. Yep. Um, before, like clockwork you can just lift him out of the cogs he can't really threaten anybody at that point like it completely destroys his um kill potential uh, uh, and rubik is a natural four step player as well but uh, overall I, I still think wyvern is like pretty good hero because i mean you can fly out of the cogs right if i'm not mistaken Five seconds but anyway remaining. overall like wyvern's a stronger hero uh then i guess navi us spend out the viper and storm um these kind of heroes I guess they're targeted towards like uh, the Viper is like, gives the Shadow Fiend a pretty hard time in the mid lane. They probably just don't want to have to deal with that. And then the Storm can kind of outmaneuver to SF, um, in in a sense that he's just a lot more mobile than a hero, and he can like 
make plays around SF, and SF typically wants to like stay grounded in his position and not have to move too much. So they just don't want to deal with that little annoyance. It's not the biggest deal, but it's just something they probably just prefer. Mm -hmm. And then um, I guess Boreal banned out the Dazzle because they know that that's something they would they would go to. But like seeing the Rubik, I'm not really that convinced that they would have went for it anyway. And then um, Spear no, Breaker, the like US if there's no if there's no Tusk, there's no Clock. You typically want like one of these uh, offlane initiators. Like, I mean, the difference between a Clock and like let's say a Bad Rider or Centaurs or a Tide even is that those the three heroes, the latter heroes that I listed, they need items to you know actually do their job. Mm -hmm. But like a hero like Clockwork, Spear Breaker, a hero like Tuscar, they don't. They just need levels to perform on the rolls, right? So that's why. Maybe the Spear Breaker might be an offlaner, Ten or they can um, consolidate the fact that their offlaner might not have like any initiation potential Five by having the support that can in initiate. And Spear Breaker is definitely one of those heroes. And then um, Puck, Puck is quite good versus Spear Breaker because you can almost always like disjoint his abilities and like make his life a living nightmare. Because you know pre BKB, you're gonna have uh, to deal with the silence. You're gonna have to deal with being locked down by the coil. Um, this is, I guess, it's a solid pick for them, but. Uh, something that worries me is that like Puck versus SF. Like SF will have like a pretty huge base damage advantage, so Puck will probably have to go for like Only you know level, leveling up the orb and mm -hmm. like spamming a lot Dire more. And, uh, but SF shouldn't really have that big of a problem until level six. When when Puck hits level six, generally like a Dream Coil plus like any type of rotation will just knock out of SF. So that's probably like really good for them. And obviously US goes for the Omni Knight. Uh, Omni SF, we've seen this combo remaining. since like uh, what ESL New York. I think EG was running it a couple times Five versus Vici, and maybe another couple sets. Like it's just a really sol solid combo. It's like you wanted to run into SF. Reserve SF, time. one of his best items, if you like, one of his best items hands down is BKB. I mean, you you get a BKB just from having this hero on your team. You can yep. go for bigger and better things, and like bringing down the SF when he's immune to magic and physical and. And in return, he's putting out so much damage versus you. It's, it's kind of a nightmare, and it, it kind of forces the Boreal's hand to like pick up maybe like a Spear Breaker, which wouldn't be, or not a Spear Breaker, a Phantom Lancer. And they can even ban it here, which now should be like a US's natural defusal carrier that's in the meta. There, there you go. And like, uh, PL is quite good because you know you can disjoint the Spear Breaker charge. Like, a lot of times he just like charges you, and then you double walk away, and then you like he kind of charges where your location was, and then stops, and then it's like. Mm -hmm. Super annoying, but like it probably would have been one of the best picks there for Navi US, I guess, or not for Boreal. I mean, against the Omni, and then um, now like Boreal again. Like I, I anticipated them going for more late game last game, but this game they maybe can go for like Ten um, seconds remaining. They they might go for the hard carry. Or they might go for that like you know all in like Five type of mid game yeah. remaining. style. I wouldn't be surprised. Another defusal candidate maybe is Naga out of the picture. Maybe is a Reserve someone to fill time. the void that PL would have been good at. Naga can be good. Like Naga is one of those heroes where if you take it like later in the draft and the enemy team can't deal with it, it's like super annoying. And I mean, um, they don't have like the best push, and Boreal has really Spectre. good anti-push as well. Oh, they went for the Spectre. Navi the Spectre, turn to yeah, it, it kind of this goes into the same like thought process that I was saying. Is like Spectre, Navi US isn't really going to end the game versus Spec, so you can kind of expect it to go late, and if He's not like completely getting shut down from the early game. Then, um, Spec should have a pretty good game. And then, obviously, like you can go into the defusal. Like, he's gonna, he's gonna wreck the Rubik. I mean, the Rubik. If you go blink, you're not even gonna cast it in the team fight with the Haunt. And Rubik is a hero that gets like demolished by by Spectre Five in general because yeah. you really have no way to protect yourself. And then, um, like, you Reserve you can do a lot of cheeky things with Spectre. Like, you can ulti and just like spam your your reality and just switch to all your different illusions and create a lot of chaos Bloodseeker. in the fight and even dodge ganks. Oh shit, Bloodseeker. Forgot about that, that guy. <laughs> oh man. That hero's so broken. Oh, how, how the hell did he make it all the way through? I don't know if it's something they've been holding out, but the Bloodseeker now gets to pop up and yeah, he clearly is something special to all teams across all regions. I mean, in your opinion, Prepare Fluff, since we don't get to hear very often, what is it that makes Bloodseeker so good? It's just the fact that like when enemy on the enemy team is like getting low the thirst just buffs them up so incredibly hard and you don't even understand like why it's happening when you play against it. it's just like why does he have max move speed why is he hitting so hard and then like rupture is just so insane it lasts forever and you, you really have to just TP out of it or just like face the wrath of the blood seeker he just runs around and heals 
Uh, comes back into the fight, throws up no blood rights. Too annoying. I don't know. I really hate Bloodseeker. <laughs> I think he, he, like Bloodseeker, Bloodseeker, and Huskar, and Nogger, are like some of the heroes that were if you fifth pick them, just so so bad for any team. I don't know how good it is this game because I haven't really analyzed it, but I mean they felt really confident. Battle. They picked it up really fast. So you gotta look at it closer. And you know, but it's not even just in the competitive play. Even in my in our pub scene, Bloodseekers. Well, look at bottom. But this is a bit of what we saw before. Another different hero that does another blocking potential. And Jubin <laughs> wants to be there to stop him, but he's getting body blocked, and now he's power damage. Oh my goodness. Jepin's, I don't know if he was so ready damage. for it or what. <laughs> just Jubin's trying to <laughs> remove the Why tree. So that it doesn't. Jepin's is like, no, you did this to me last time. There's <laughs> no freaking way I'm going to let you do this. So Jubin was going to try to run through the, the trees and like break. Break this area down here, yeah. Because they didn't want him to, uh, like that's where naturally Clockwork will block in his creep. So, like he he paid for that so hard. He had to blow a clarity. He lost majority of his regen. Oh man, not as good as last time. Jepins is still gonna be able to get that cog block and get the creep wave closer to his tower. So as we get started and underway in the game to action, the team names might have changed a bit, but I assure you it's still Boreal going against the way too stack on the radiant side. Boreal up one game here. Match point. And for, check top, check top. They smoke. Yeah. Snaking, dancing back and forth, but it's mid lane where you're going to see them kind of stalking here. Pizza Dad with that early Arctic burn can engage from even a long distance with the slow, and they're going to go. And with that, oh, brilliant block. Is it enough? It is. He can't squeeze through that, and he could go down. Nice shift to avoid the raise, and first blood going to be going to Boreal, taking down the shadow. That's an easy combo as well. Really easy to execute on, on the Boreal side, but such an unexpected rotation. They just spoke the instant the creeps kind of got near each other in the lanes, and that, I wouldn't have seen that. But it seems like they put a lot of attention on this Kakoni guy. And he seems like a player. He's like making a lot of plays for their team, and yeah. snowballing him is great. We'll see if they could do a bit of the same. I mean, you were already talking about the disadvantage Puck has in this one on one matchup, so any sort of boost he can get would, would certainly help out. They already help out the good first blood, and now they kind of remain in the dark. And snaking is pretty damn far forward. It's a long cooldown for the Arctic Burn, but it is back up now. And PQ has the mana for a fissure. This is a bit tantalizing here. Now he can charge out, but we'll see. Yeah, he's gonna pull back in a way. Looks like it's he also knows they're there because he ran. They ran through the ward that he had on the left, on oh. the You're right. above the cliff, right there. But he's still happy to hang around. Now PQ moves in. It's waiting for maybe the charge and then the stun to come thereafter. Now there was another kill. Bloodseeker taking down Jepins. Wanted to see if the action was going to be continuing here. But yeah, bottom lane. They engage onto the clockwork and they do get the kill. So clockwork goes down with the assistance of just a Rubik and a Bloodseeker. It's it's really like very difficult to lane versus Bloodseeker with m many, many off laners. Like only a couple can really lane versus him because he just has infinite sustain and his damage output is too high. Um, Clock is going to struggle here, and the, the beauty of that is that the Omni can kind of protect mid and stack, and then the Rubik can get his levels, and on Radiant, you can you know, do the triple pull. It, like he's already level 3, he's going to get a lot more levels here and farm, and they don't really have to take care oh. so much about their blitz for self sufficient. They were trying to make it go on to Snake oh. King, they, they actually uh, put him into a bit of a sandwich, but he did manage to charge out of course, and as he comes back to the lane, he's welcomed with the quick dagger and the secondary fissure. And now the Arctic Burn. They're going to get him on the second hurrah, it looks like. Or are they? He salves up. Oh, get punched in the ass. He will go down. They worked for that one, but they got it. <laughs> and, and that's a great Splinter Blast by Pizza Dad as well. That's just... A lot of people forget about the ability or, like, think it's pretty negligible. But if they if he didn't land that Splinter Blast there at that, that precise timing, then he probably would have got away. He did not. And with that... Looking like a bit of a struggle here. Your mid lane Shadow Fiend brought down first. They get snaking at the top. And the bottom is going pretty damn well here, I'd have to say. For the way two stack, you got uh, Bloodseeker, 21 and 7. They're really throwing me off. Kakoni, they have two different Kakoni <laughs> team. Jesus Christ, they really don't make this easy for me. <laughs> freaking aliases and Weebu anime. I, I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's Ritsu. Oh, Jepton's getting caught out. Yep. Oh, Jepins is clockwork migrating elsewhere, but not to the promised land. It's to, to Death Valley. He'll go down, and the game will be back to two and two, and a free bounty rune there for way two on the way over. So the struggle for Jepins continues here in this game on his clockwork. 
Yeah, he's he's just trying to make plays. Like he he knows he can't really do a lot, but I mean, I I'm not sure like exactly what he, he will even get out of that rotation though. So I, if I was him, I would just kind of sit in lane and get the XP. Like at least, like he'd probably be around the same level as Snake King because I mean they weren't really controlling the lane Boom, all that much, and I mean he could have just fogged back the wave if he needed anyway. Snake King's getting a ton out of top lane. Oh, they're, they're muscling back. He's going to go for the charge. Will the Fissure be there? It will. It stops him on the way out, but he's already too far gone. So it's just more irritating for Snaking than anything else. He'll have to round the bend and go all the way back to his off lane, further away from the XP and potential sneaky little CS he could sneak in. He's backing out, mm -hmm. and he'll have to wait. But, you know, the sacrifice that even, you know, Jubei's been making at this point, just, uh, you know, being the, the buddy in crime here for your Shadow Fiend, making stacks, being there in case something breaks out. Because we saw it last game, they put a lot of pressure on Trough. They did it at the start of this one, oh, so yeah. they're like, Omni, stay close. But he's got no levels is the unfortunate downside. He's only level two still. Yeah, and, th and this next rune's going to be pretty big for Kakoni because, like, like I said, you look at the... The damage disparity. I mean, he has like 75, and then SF's already like 120, 130-ish. He yeah. he needs the orb to CS, uh, but like he's already like getting so far ahead now with this bottle crow, and they're gonna give levels to Omni. That's really nice for him for all the sacrifice. The one thing about <clears throat> the Spirit Breaker is that he's um gonna get a fast six, but Spirit Breakers as an offlane tend not to get as much farm, but that's okay because SF and Blood Seeker will soak up most of it on the map anyway. Oh, it's pretty good for them. They're going for Jeppins. He's ruptured up. He's trying to run up north. Closer to his friends, but can't get there. And he ends up going down. So where the way two stack have trouble in the mid and top area, they seem to continue to get a lot, taking advantage of poor little Jeppins on his clockwork. And for a while there, the supports oh, yeah. wanted to rotate on over, but they were kind of just continuing to hang out, probably just waiting for that six-minute bounty rune to maybe engage on someone, but the engagement happened bottom instead. Yeah, they have they have to secure it since he wasn't bottle crying with his puck. Mm -hmm. They kind of just wa wanted to make sure it happened. I don't, I don't see like uh, Nob US or Team Tinker or whatever way too stack like putting that much pressure on mid. It's kind of hard to do. Like your your Rubik has to be smoking there to get the the lift because charge is pretty ineffective no versus blood, puck. Please. He can always disjoint it with face shift and like, Omni doesn't really offer much in, uh, in aggressive terms. So yeah, uh, I don't know. Like um, why they need to stand there? I like. I would like it if they put more attention on the clock because he kind of needs some help to yeah. catch up versus Blood Seeker, especially since he's like already almost level seven. Well, they do have PQ nearby now, just in case, so Jeppins can feel a bit more comfortable. He's finally going to be able to get his level four, which kind of shows that how much of a struggle it's been so far. But this is the closest he's gotten to free farm at this point, and you can see. I almost called Kakoni. Ritsu steps back, goes for the jungle farm a bit, recognizing that a couple of supports were missing off the map. Jube spotted him, trying to rotate into their woods, but because of it, they just yeah. kind of deter and step off the lane. So it doubles nice... up as like um, Rubik getting a six here. Yeah. Like he, typically, if you give him the six this early, it's going to be a really massive impact for the game. And he already has Arcane, so his his game's looking really good, except for the fact that like in the mid game, Claw and Spec are going to put a lot of pressure on him. I, I expect an earn because. You kind of need some type of sustain versus those lineups. Otherwise, like without the tranquils, he went for the arcane. Without the tranquils, you can't really sustain yourself. You just die to chip, pretty much. But um, oh, mid, going Jube. for mid, and Jube was doing a creep pull, so he might not make it. He makes it. He gets oh. the heal off. Whoa, really close. He was like getting ready to do a stack, and the puck might not have known it, but yeah, that was a... great timing for him to go in. It just unfortunately the heal happened to come, and it was more than enough to get the return kill. That was actually this is actually the next thing I was gonna talk about is like um like I said in the draft, like Puck at level six usually you can rotate over with the coil and get easy kill on SF, but with the Omni Pick it you kind of have to expect that he'll be there the majority of the time, like ninety five percent of the time, so a play like that's quite aggressive on SF. Uh, I guess you kinda of just look the top lane maybe. Yeah, they're going. Snake King, easy turnaround. Just sets up the beautiful nether strike, and because of the rotation from Trout, it's just one quick snipe of a raise. They try to charge in to nice go for Pizza Dad, but yeah, very nice Fitcher comes in from the north from PQ, and they'll have to halt that pressure. But now that they have uh, Ritsu here, maybe they decide to get some early jabs on this tier 1 tower. You can see a bit of an exchange possibly coming out from Boreal in the mid lane. Jubei shows himself. He has a little mana, quickly throws on the repel, and he's going to run. But Kakoni might, might pursue 
No coil yet, 13 seconds, but he thinks he can get the kill. Meanwhile, they are going to be able to get the Earthshaker top lane. Snaking gets it on Peaky, but we'll keep action here, and he just easily farts out a little rift and gets the kill. Oh, man. The, the, this level one rotation from the Wyvern and the Earthshaker, though it was good, there's a significant drawback in that the Spearbreaker got two and a half, maybe three off the first wave, and like, uh, you know, the Puck can't, is not really is able to attack. snowball against the Omni supporting Dyer's the SF. Like, typically a play like that, yeah, your Puck can just kill the SF like all day and have some sort of advantage, but like they made that play, but it's actually just super, I don't know, it's not doing a whole lot for them. I feel like if they kind of just Dyer's sat in their safe lane and made sure that the Spearbreaker was zoned out first, they would have had a better time here because like, Spec can't really deal with the Spearbreaker on his own and the fact that they made that play just makes it so difficult for KBH and uh, when you're in this position, you're getting pressured. Getting the, the Radiance under all this pressure is going to be very difficult for him. He needs a lot of space from his teammates. But the clock is level 5, not even 6 yet. And you're pretty much banking on your puck to carry the game so that your clock can like get in there and, and make some space for, for the Spectre. Yeah. But they, oh, and they're, they're actually going for a Shadow Blade on this. Uh, I kind of would have liked to see a mech just because like it gives them good sustain for the pushes and Dyer's it would have been hard for Goro to pursue that right now but oh, just for little players here comes uh, what I believe is our first haunt of the game they're looking to commit onto little Ritsu here they get the dagger off and slows him down but Luka's coming in from behind Snake King looking to get the pick onto PQ looks like they'll get it with the elbow way too and a fade pull he goes down now KVH in a bit of a staggering state hops for Snake King changes course goes for way too way too steals the dagger and he's like I gotta get the hell out of here <laughs> tries to go to the south but he gets slowed from the Splinter Blast, we make it away. Another dagger to fly. This one from the Spectre. Way wow. 2 is gone. Oh, that was wonderful work coming out from the Way 2 group. It's so anticlimactic. Like, there's a bunch of heroes there, but their cooldowns are, you know, they're, they're all their skills are cooling down, so they pretty much can't do anything to stop, like, kill this Rubik, who's just, like, in the worst position after, like, um, all said and done. And they even don't even kill a Bloodseeker. I'm not even sure how they would have even attempted that to Radiance begin with because Wyvern's not attack. 6 and Urshaker is pretty much just a fissure. Spec would have to hit multiple times, but it's like right under the tier 1. It wouldn't have been really difficult for Navi to respond and like obviously when you start a fight, Spearbreaker is just going to charge you from across the map, so... It, you can already tell that Boreal is feeling the pressure right now. They like they feel pressure to do things, but I'm not necessarily sure if they can actually make those plays to begin with. Um, good thing for Kony is that he's actually very close to his blink mm -hmm. for the start for the start that he had and with the death on the SF like it Tired. could have set him back pretty hard but yeah like I said Kokoni seems like a pretty good player and they have stacks here for him so he's probably gonna get his blink off so that's exactly what they need yeah and Jeppins hopefully gets his level 6 they're gonna be splitting all this <laughs> XP between the three but there it is he's got the hook shot now this could help set things up so that when we have seen a couple of these opportunities where the way two group just happened to just Dyer's walk on away. This clockwork might be able to be there now and lock them in place so that they can finish what they've started. But so, you know, we'll have to see if it's going to be too little, too late. It is only 12 minutes, about 13 minutes in, eight to three. A pretty good advantage here for the oh, way two yeah. group early on. But yeah, they're they're going to have to try to hold out. Almost how the tables have turned Dyer's in game number two. It's now Boreal. They're going to have to hope that the Spectre looks to kind of get the space she needs to bring it back later in the game while it's the way too group that are oh. going to look to keep having the pressure. They can't get snaking. Attempted fissure. That was, that was really close. It was close. Uh, and, well, he could have charged out anyway, but I was going to say that the Spearbreaker has a Midas, so it, like as far as transitioning goes with his start and going into the Midas, he's actually going to be like six slotted uh, in this game where like pretty damn close, so he's going to have a really good game. And then as far as the Shadowfin goes with the, the mech, like they had, they could go mech and group up and push and stuff, but like I guess he's thinking like, why would I do that? I can just control the map, like make them so afraid of me. We don't even need to group. Like, get, we don't want to give them the opportunity to like take a team fight because their Boros team fight is quite strong. They're just gonna split the map up. They're going like, for control. Ritsu here, and the Haunt even committed from KVH. They're gonna get the kill on the Bloodseeker. Trauf goes into Shadow Blade, actually gets caught out from the stolen Fissure, and he still hangs about. It ends up just being a one-man drop in favor of Boreal. And yeah, you know, no mech build up and uh, no BKB. Well, maybe Trout's like, why do I need to do that? I got an Omni Knight. He does both. So, 
He'll make it work. Level 7, still no commitment to Guardian Angel yet. Just going all in for the, the Q&W at this point. Just the the reason why my instincts tell me to go for the mech on this F though is that like their team fight is really good and they, they have like with the advantage that they had like especially since clock was like barely even six like a couple minutes ago they could have just ran at towers and dove the shit out of the Wario like they could have oh. easily destroyed them. They made that look <laughs> easy. easy. They just threw him up in the air yeah. and allowed Trout to just chunk him down. And before he could even try Dyer's to orb away, that was just a quick, sweet attack. little pick right there for the Waitsu group. Very nice stuff. And I do have to say, you know, Winter Wyvern, we're already praising Dyer's everything about the hero that makes it so good. But I always do fear about one thing, and I want to know your thoughts on it. You know, their change they made before bringing him into Captain's Mode on his Winter's Curse was, you know, outside of the focal point for the Winter Curse, whoever he catches around it is going to be, you know, they're going to take a lot less damage. There's huge damage reduction there. And I wonder if it's a bit of a conflict between a team where you have such huge AoE. Imagine he sets up a big Winter's Curse and that there's a big follow-up of an Echo Slam, Spectre's Haunt, you know, even Puck. A lot of the damage potential that they could be putting out there could be nerfed down quite a bit. So is that something you think about when you're playing something like a Wyvern? You don't, or is the curse more utilized to catch one isolated target from afar? Because if you catch a lot, you could ruin the potential yeah. for huge, a lot of damage you could put out there. No, um, well, I used to, I used to think in terms of that, like, it seemed kind of an anti-synergy spell, but, um, I mean, experience and time has proven, like, with Navi playing it, Soneko playing beautifully, that the hero is just, like, eliminating that one target with the Witcher's Curse and being able to, to go through the BKB mm -hmm. is a massive benefit for your team, and it doesn't even matter, actually, that the other heroes don't take damage. Man, they oh, just, nice. for such a slippery hero like Puck, they don't make it look that hard to just get a hold of him and take him down. And they do it again. Oh, no, especially with this Fissure. Yep. Oh, they want more. They're going right up for Jeppins. Poor little Jeppins. to be put into a bucket of bolts now. He just gets manhandled at this point. Two get dropped. Killing spree for way two. Odage for way two stack all together, and they're going to be able to clear out this tier one and continue to charge down this mid lane, so... It seems like they were able to kind of just shake off game number one, and they are playing pretty stellar gameplay here in game number two. Yeah, just all their lanes went well. They pretty much Dyer's won every lane um, to the extent that the Offlinger like got his levels. Not so much farm, but he, he did pressure the Spectre quite a bit. But he haunted in and he... He was getting away from Snake King. Tried to TP in front of it, but then got charged out his TP, so force for Haunt. There goes the Winter's Curse, the focal on the Jubei. He just repels. Trout dishes out a huge Requiem. They put out the Rupture. Spectre's going to be going down. Way too many a lot of the damage. After the death, Requiem. Kakoni commits for it, and now the other Kakoni, his twin evil brother, going to slash him down. Gets the kill. Ritsu grabs that one. A double all day. And PQ, I think I might make it away. I might go. But the thing he doesn't know is that, well, Snaking is charging him, so they know exactly where he is. Kakoni, number two, AK Ritsu, catches up, slashes him, and has to unfortunately try to find his way through the cogs if he wants to continue chase. But it looks like they might. He stops, and here comes Snaking. Commits on in. A rotation trying to come, but there it's too late. Pizza Dad can't get in the time with the cold embrace. Are they going to go for him now? Uh oh. Pizza Dad, self cold embrace, and they finally pull back, but oh, big win right there for Way 2's group. They lose Trout, but they get so much more. Yeah, and it, this is the thing about those heroes, like what I said about how you fifth pick like a Bloodseeker or a Huskar or something. I mean, you pretty much guarantee, when you pick them in those situations, you're guaranteed that you're gonna get the form. Like, knowing that Boreal has a Spectre, like, they can't, they're not gonna aggro trial or anything. He's just gonna get. Pretty much, he's gonna get the lane that he wants. He's gonna dominate the clock. He's gonna get his free farm, and he's just gonna do like blood secret things. And um, I mean, Urshik here is pretty good for blood seeker. Wyvern is actually amazing for blood seeker as, uh, throughout the entire game, just because you can lock him down for so long through the BKB. But um, like, yeah, the hero's just so ridiculously OP in my opinion. So like, getting that kind of start is no good for them. So we'll see if they continue their pace, which I don't see why not. They already have a couple of Midas's. Trout got his health. Shadowblade and Yasha. Komi thinks he can make a go on a Jubei. Might get in trouble himself. They dish out the Fissure, looking to finish off Jubei. They get him. Rupture to fly. This one on KVH. He goes right for the TP and will hightail it out. 
charge with a bash follow-up, and then the nether strike. PQ can't really go anywhere, but gets help from the cold embrace. Nope. Thereafter, going to get popped out from the help away too. Now a Requiem to get dished out. Good burst of damage. Kakoni retreating up to the north. The hook shot comes in. He catches on to Ritsu. Ritsu decides he wants the man fight clockwork, and there's your natural counter from your Rubik. Just pulls him right back. And he just unleashes a fury. Now has Orb. Way too looking to go on forward. Oh, doesn't doesn't jaunt to it. Okay. Uh, they have no more steam. Unless what's your wants to go ahead. I wouldn't put it past them, but yeah, uh, they'll actually pull back. Way too had to glimmer the whole time that um, the Wyvern's curse was on his uh, Omni Knight. He could, I think, he could have mitigated a lot of damage here, but that's okay. I feel like I'm picking up way too a lot. I heard he he woke up like right before the match, but still, uh, you can do you can be doing more, you know. I don't know how good I that, expect that, that, that my that former would be. You just woke up. Well, you probably should know when the match is and wake up and have a, a bowl of Wheaties and be ready and prepared, but, you know, way too, we already know. He's a crafty veteran. He's been around the block for Dota play. But, you know, yeah, this is, I expect more of him because yeah. he's a great player. Yeah, my it's, it's okay. It's okay to expect a lot of that. Uh, Brian, if you don't mind, I'm actually going to recall you. The Skype is doing a bit of the quality poopy thing, and you're starting to sound like a, a little futzy. All so right. I'm going to go ahead and call you right back, okay? up that one right there. We'll look for my solo on to Brian. There we go. We'll give him a new call and we'll get that rehosted. He sounded a bit crazy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? All right, I'm in. All right, yeah, we're all good now. That's yeah, Skype things, but we're back in action. Still pretty damn good advantage right now for the Way 2 stack as long as they continue to play this one out. They already have a Yasha on reserve for uh, Ritsu here. So probably going to go down the road of just picking up his S and Y. Trouf, it looks like he's doing it as well. He has a belt of strength and a Yasha himself. They're just continuing to build the damage. I don't think they feel necessary to get more defense. Uh, yeah, they're they're good on defense right now. They have the Omni Knight. They have the Glimmer Cape on the Rubik. Soon to have the Aura. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to have a BKB on their Bloodseeker. And I guess, is Rubik going to SNY too? Is that, did you say that before? Uh, no, have, I didn't. It's like, it's like three SNYs. Yeah. Oh, oh, Spirit Breaker 2? Yeah, this is, unless he's going for... Yeah. yeah, he is. He's got the Yasha. All right. I don't <laughs> see a lot of the SMY strat, but it's almost all in here for Way 2's group. They engage mid lane. It's just a little bit of a trade, but no blood will be shed. And this is all the meanwhile space for Trout. He is solo farming it out with the big boy. He is doing damn good work. Looks like it's going to be a good grab. And as they try to intercept, look at this. It's going to be Jubei potentially caught out. Winter's curse. Follow-up stun. He's out. No Omni Knight going to be engaging in this fight. Let's see if Boreal can sweep on over. It actually forces Trouf away from Roche. Roche is only... That's a really that was a really nice play by Trauf. I don't see people do that at, like at all. I mean, he just walked into Roshan with it. Those items allow him to do it. I mean, they're not really necessarily very common for SF to be building, but like he knew that he could do it. He pushed his limits and like they got a free Rosh, which is something that's pretty hard to do against like the lineup of Dire on uh, of Dire, especially when they're like you know they have that that uphill control and the tier two towers nearby the TP two. It's that was a really nice play by him. Looks like Ritsu needs to restart the router, warm up the potato a bit so he can get back in, unfortunately. I actually just bought myself a new router. I don't know why I get so nerdly excited about it, but we'll, we'll get it hooked up later tonight. I was having hiccups before. So far, it's so good, though, Fluff. Fingers crossed. Everything nice. keeps uh, smooth sailing from here on out. So he'll depart, and if you did want to go ham with any sort of additional dice, like this is the time. This is where we have to, to BS and fill the void of these 
pauses. It's for a while there that we were, you know, graced with all these LAN events, ESL, you know, Summit 3, Red Bull. It felt like we, the days <laughs> of pausing and all that was, like, done. And we didn't have to worry about it. But then as we come back and have ES Portal and this, uh, rest yeah. assured, there's, there's plenty of hiccups to happen. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to BS. Honestly, the way that I look at these games is there's just so much information. I'm just constantly being thrown information that I want to talk about. But the game is just moving too fast. Like, someone's dying on the other side of the map. I'm talking about like bottom lane tops dying, something oh like that. My God. But a uh, big, big pickles right here is that there's like a relic on the Spectre. He almost has Radiance actually, 300 gold. Let's see how that changes the dynamic of the game. Puck has uh, a Midas. I don't know when he picked it up actually, but he has one that should be noted. Uh, Clock is just completely screwed. We already knew that. Uh, let's see. Did they, um, with this Radiance, if they get the pick on the, the Omni? Specifically, I feel like they have enough damage to to really mess with Navi US because, like, again, BKB they did, they opted out of BKBs uh -huh. besides the Bloodseeker, and I I do think Wyvern is still pretty good versus Bloodseeker in general. Like, even though he has the BKB, if if the fight happens in such a way where Bloodseeker runs into the into Boreal's lineup and he gets what um, Wyvern's curse on Winter's curse on him, it's gonna be pretty disastrous for him. Um, I can see the aid just going down pretty quickly for Shadow Fiend, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> Spectre is one of those heroes that you have to fear late game. But the only thing that I'm unsure of is that, like, I haven't experienced so much uh, Bloodseeker versus Spectre matchups in the past. Like, I don't have very good experience with it, so I don't, I'm not sure if Bloodseeker is actually gonna like out carry Spec or if he's gonna have issues dealing with this uh, Radiance. But either way, he already has a pretty significant advantage in general, so. Maybe you can itemize around that, but yeah, I, I still think Navi US has a. It's pretty obvious that they have a good advantage here, and and base breaking. While it might have been hard, because the Boreal's lineup is pretty good at the spam, they have. They have the urns. Um, they have the glimmer. They have, Omni Knight. The, the repel is going to allow SF to just walk on the cliff, with the Aegis whenever they choose to do that, and just chip away the tower. And um, Boreal really doesn't have a response because, again, they need. They pick Spectre kind of because they wanted to have the Diffusal Blade up for the game and like they won't have a way to deal with the Repel and the the GA and all that stuff and honestly they're like if they initiate into Navi US it wouldn't be that good for them either unless they were getting picks. I mean I don't think I could have said it any better. Dyer's it makes a lot of sense. Tower. Still it's obvious that way to have that bit of advantage but you really never know. Boreal, they can creep in a good fight. They get their Radiance put together on the Spectre. It could be just one step of what I like to call like a five-step program to get back into this game. But now that Ritsu has returned, they're back into action. They're not letting up a bit. They're going right for the mid-tier two tower here. Trauf is going to be able to get it down. And we'll see if they want to just continue to build this pressure so there is no hopeful comeback for the Spectre now. For anyone in Dota TV, and it's so funny, I totally jinxed myself. Brian, like the second I said what? everything's been going good, the stream did go down. <laughs> right then, right then oh. and there, that second I said it, I looked over and people were freaking out and rioting. <laughs> something about something, something. Twitch doesn't like un unstable upload, blah, blah, blah. That's why I have the router to fix. I'll fix it later. But we're still live in Dota TV. Nice. We're still recording. We're still all well. I'll fiddle with it every once in a while. We'll hope for the best. But, eh, what can you do? That's the best I can offer. So with that... Here comes way too stack. Charging up from the north side. Boreal, what do you think? Do they just have to accept the fact they're going to lose their outer towers? Just farm what yeah. they can and just hope for a good high ground defense is, and then take that big fight there? Yes. There's no there's no way they defend tier 2 top. Like, there's too many places they can get picked off. And, like, uh, there's no, like, way they can actually take a good fight there. But them forcing the fight on down a bottom lane could be a thing just because Navi US would have to stutter their DPs. They come in kind of delayed. They're also really set up here. For the okay. They need to get out. Uh, Navi US has a team tinker. Way too stack has built up their defense. They're not going to let it go. That's a really nice trade for them. They got the tier 2 top and then defend the tier 1. But that realistically was the only play that Oriole could have went for. And um, another thing about Spectre, I have confirmed that Spectre is... Not that great for a split seeker in the late game. Uh, well, Dyer's bottom tower is that, under attack. I was wondering about that, but yeah. Um, I guess the main reasons. This is just me guessing. Dyer's is that structures are fortified. Like, you have to maneuver as a specter, and a lot of attack. times, like the rupture is going to tear you apart. And I think that.
blood seekers in general. Blood seeker actually goes down the bottom. Yeah, they're they're starting to go in, and they quickly take out Jeppins, but the rest of them pretty damn weak and wounded. Trout pulls back, still has that Aegis. As they jump on ahead, they want to get pizza dab, but the Golden Brace is going to hold it up for now. Kikoni, meanwhile, oh killing spree now as he clears out the other two. Trout barely able to scale the way, gets a heal, gets a repel. He looks to re-engage. Snakey could go down next, will go down. Oh, man. Double kill for Kikoni. We're calling out for the hope here for Boreal to maybe scrap their way into this game. But Trout now charges right back in. Gets a quick kill with the right click. Ends up being a four for three trade at the end of it. And what a bit of a hot mess breaking out there in the bottom lane. There wasn't even a Guardian Angel used. I don't even think there's been a Guardian Angel this game yet. Yeah, usually like usually when you play support Omni, it's kind of... You don't even skill it at level six because the, the other spells are way more important. So he's probably like weighing his pros and cons. And a lot of, it's a lot of magic damage from Boreal anyway. But like the crazy thing about that fight was the SF literally four shot the spec maybe even five shot is like you couldn't do anything about it and that's that's something that i was just about to say which is like um you know specter after radiance typically you go for the heart or like uh, maybe some stats efficient items like maybe the manta if you really want it mm -hmm. but like again they're, they're never going to get their defusal and even when he gets heart then he needs armor because the fucking blood oh sorry the blood seeker <laughs> and the sf are going to tear through him and he, he needs to do too many things all at once. And he, he actually goes for the ultimate orb here. I think it's a little better than the heart just because, like, he, like I said, if he, if he goes to heart, he's not going to have the armor anyway. So he might as well try to, like, play around with the Manta, um, do damage in his own way, and, like, it'll just help him ever so slightly. But again, like, you know, when you... you I'm, I don't know if they base their pick on the defusal, and I... If Spectre was their defusal buyer, it's going to be quite late in the yeah. game. So it's kind of worrisome. And then PQs is really close to his Blink Dagger as well, 1900 gold. And from the engagement they've taken, I've seen a lot of them where they're able to kind of get rid of Jubei first. And it's still way too stacked that they're able to kind of come out on top. So even when Omni's taken out of the picture, there's still a lot more that they have to work with. So if they're just going to itemize in a way where they want to rid of that pesky GA or Rebel... Yeah. You know, they still have plenty of other problems they're going to have to deal with. I mean, you know, while you were going on, you know, on a little bit, Trouf had caught up with Puck and nearly two-shot. Thankfully, this Puck slippery <laughs> away. It just shows Radiant's that just, they're hitting like trucks at this point. Boreal oh, yeah. better be damn ready with like a hard iron shell of a of a defense in their high ground. Huge Echo Slam, the, the perfect Winter's Curse, a coil that S4 would just cream over. I don't know, like they need a little bit of everything at this point, but here they come, Fluff. They're going right top lane and they're gonna start wailing away on this tier three. I mean, he's got Repel, no Aegis anymore, but Shadow Blade out. Hey, oh catch up with the Winter's God. Curse, but no. They really need that for the Bloodseeker. Now they don't got it. And here comes Snaking. The linebacker just rushes on forward with a blitz play. Now an echo on the back end lines is pretty big damage, but potentially a heal to come. No, Jubei gonna go down again. Still no Guardian Angel happening this game for him, but it doesn't matter. The rest of his squad of goons are gonna be able to clean up the rest of the mess. It's a triple kill for Trouf as they wipe out four all day. Now a buyback even coming, but this is feeling like the beginning of the potential end here. Is it though? Yeah. Might pull back. They're not gonna actually. It, go. it, it definitely is, yeah. or at, at least like mentally. I mean, you already saw that. Uh, you know, Pizza Dad. He's uh, he's played excellent in the first game, and you can already, maybe that's a little bit of tilt, or like his his team is kind of unsure of how to approach the fight, and they like he might have th like casted that spell, thinking that Trough would be in the same position that he was, like hitting the tower. But when, when in fact Trough kind of saw that and backed off, good play by him. But um, <clears throat> I want to come in. Way too on his build at least. Like for all the hate that I've been giving him, I think the urn, like I said, is a really good pickup for this game. He, they need the sustain versus all that, that spam. Um, the glimmer is really great for all magic damage, and he understands that he can't really utilize a blink in, in the team fight. So he goes, he just goes instead for the stat efficient Agadim scepter, which is a great pickup anyway. Like it's, it's always fun to have it. So he, he's itemizing well for the game. Um, Omni Knight, I think he himself should probably just go for the Glimmer, like probably before his Aghanims. Like it's very, very optimistic to try to go for that straight up, and he's already been tanked for like many times. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just kind of like, I think that he can position a bit better in the team fights, like stay a bit back. But I mean, overall, 
he's doing what he needs to do. He's repelling the SF. You can just go chip at the tower and like he, you saw that Boreal can't really do anything about it. All their damage is magical at this point and they can't even like can't really burst anyone or man fight them. So Navi pretty much has like to wait for the next Roshan which should be like spawning in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. And there's I don't see any way that Boreal can really take that fight. They'll probably end up losing a Rax or two there. And even the game. But is it at the point where it's like, Incoming. well, we better try to do something because if they get the Roche, then we might as well just call it game. Because, you know, then it's just all in on another potential yeah. high ground defense. So it's like either A, we go for the Roche contention and, and hope we get it and then get the Roche for ourselves and get a big fight. Or we just wait for the inevitable push coming out from way too stack and, and just try our best at a good high ground run. And this time, hopefully, no early Winter's Curse or any sort of misstep. Make everything work. And it, it might the have thing to is they don't even have that option. Yeah. They don't even have that option because the, if if they go for out for a play, they're gonna just like they're gonna wipe themselves and it's not even worth it for them because like you can see right now, way two stack doesn't even need ages to break the high ground. So if you sacrifice your life, there, you're gonna lose all your you're gonna lose any potential to actually do anything in, on the next defense. All right, Snake King BKB's up and slays the dragon. Just like that, Glyph will come, but okay, Coil on the three, it's an Agnum's Coil. Can they snap it? Well, they get the snap on Trout, and even through Repel, he'll get stunned up. Waits a bit, Fissure flies thereafter, but doesn't stop him. They get their tier three. Now Rax is exposed, Trout angry, very angry, canceling out his Requiem, wants to get in there, and oh, gets welcomed with a pretty big Echo, but the Earthshaker goes down as fast as his Echo was dropped. And now it's gonna be KVH. Double kill for Trout. Jepins is like, why not, right? We just throws himself into the battle. Yeah. And I think this is just the final YOLO hurrah for Boreal. And we're going to be going into a three-game stretch. It looks like after Way2 and his group pull off a pretty damn good game number two. Oh, yeah. And, like, that Winter Wyvern pickoff was massive. Because, like I said, they, they needed that Wyvern, uh, most especially to be able to shut down one of the two fours, like either the SF or the Bloodseeker. And I, I think Bloodseeker would have been better. Just, like... Without him, the fight is just, I think it's near impossible. That was the biggest goal that they needed to land. So it was good, it was really good um, focus fire there from like thinking to, he just kind of just yoloed in for the Wyvern, but at the same time Wyvern was pretty far forward, but like good targeting. Yeah. He recognized the overstep and immediately moved in and got what he wanted and now the team as a whole, they're very satisfied. They get to walk away, two sets of racks now cleared, and for Boreal, they like, yeah, we're done here. They call GG, and that's gonna wrap things up. So, what do you think? You felt game number one, it was a pretty significant draft advantage for Boreal, and being able to execute what they wanted. What would you say is your uh, cliff note almost for game number two? Is it another situation where maybe the draft was a bit better, and maybe Boreal got a bit ambitious with their Spectre pick, or was it something about the way to stack maybe had a a fire lit under their ass, and they just seem to play a much bigger, a much more of their A game in game number two. Much, much better draft from Navi US. They won pretty much all three lanes. Um, the Spectre seemed a little forced. Like maybe the Omni played too many mind games with them. They couldn't get the peel because they got banned out right before they had the opportunity to pick it up. And the um, the biggest thing for me was the Winter Wyvern or Shaker rotation on the mid. It didn't really transition into any type of snowballing for Kikoni which is like something that they really plan to do. And, and in return, Spectre had a really d tough time dealing with the Spirit Breaker and the Spirit Breaker kind of just took off with the game here. But like, I I do think that Boreal was a little uncomfortable with that Spectre pick. They, and like I said, with the fifth pick, what's Seekers? Like, that, that hero's so broken. Please nerf. Yeah, I think now they'll remember about the hero. We might see an early ban on it in game number three. We'll have to see, but... We'll hop into that. So a three-game stretch. I don't want to waste too much time. I know you folks missed some of the action. If you're just watching on Twitch, I'll address that in just a moment. But I'll go ahead and just quickly hop into the next game. They're going to be waiting for me here. So with that, I'm Kyle Guy. That is Fluff. Catch him over at FluffDote on Twitter if you want to show your support. It's been a wonderful time so far. But we got Game 3 hype to come here of the Way2Stack taking on Boreal. We'll be coming up in just a moment. 